So first, let's talk about couch surfing. We sort of addressed couch surfing uh, yesterday. We talked about it over, you know, building your network and as a way to also meet friends locally. Uh, but hospitality networks, which is what couch surfing really falls under, um, they're great. They're free. You can live like a local. You can get a kitchen. Um, they take more than one traveler. Um, you can have a local tell you like what to do, what to see, where to go. You know, avoid this area at night. You know, definitely go this area at night to, for a good party. Don't walk here. Uh, watch out for these people. Eat here, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I really love hospitality networks because there's nothing better. There's no better way to save money than free. And um, you can get a couch. I've stayed on couches. I've stayed on blow-up mattresses. I've stayed on beds. I've got a whole guest wing to myself once. I stayed at this guy's mansion in Australia. And it was really nice. Um, you know, I've slept on floors. It's really a mix and match of whatever it is. You, and the host on these will like tell you like what kind of bed you'll get. You know, so you don't show up randomly and be like, hey, you set a bed and that's the floor. Some boring part is you don't get a lot of privacy because you're sharing, you know, you're usually in their living room. Um, maybe the host is boring. That's happened to me. You got to be really trustworthy of people. And I really like um, looking for profiles that have someone verifying, like, this person's not, you know, a serial killer. And I'm not going to end up, you know, chopped up to pieces. It's not always luxurious. You know, you're in some living room, and you got to be ready for anything because you're their guest now, and they want to take you out. So if you're like, hey, thanks for the free place. I'm going to you know, sit and read my book for three days. That's kind of defeats the purpose of you using it, and they might not want you to stay there. They might be like, great, get out of here. Um, so couch surfing is the big one. Other good ones are be welcome. They be welcome. Uh, global freeloaders kind of gives you the message of what they're going for. And uh, Servas, S E R V A S, that's an old one, as well as Hospitality Club. Those ones tend to skew older. Be welcome skews very, be welcome and global freeloaders skew young, and couch surfing is sort of in the middle. Uh, but they're great. I mean, this is like a free alternative. Um, and for all ages, you know, I've stayed with families, I've stayed with young kids, I've stayed with old people. Um, I've seen, you know, you can go as couples, you can go as families. You just sort of set the search parameters for what you want. Home exchanges. This works if you have a home. Uh, if you're nomadic like me, you don't have a home, well, I get nothing to exchange. But free, they're great for seniors, couples, families. Uh, they're comfortable, you get kitchens, you get, you know, you get a whole house, right? Um, con, you must have a home to offer. Who has a home to offer? Two, okay, we get three out of seven, eight, if you conclude me. So um, you got to trust your family. You got to be selective. And you may end up in a home that's really not centrally located. Um, so this can be problematic, but... It's really a great way to swap. And there's, you know, in all these sort of, you know, hospitality network, home exchanges, uh, house sitting that we'll get into, trust and safety is really an issue. Um, but all these sites, they have ways to verify your, your profile, the user profile, um, especially with home exchange and house sitting. They have tons of liability insurance that you can get. Um, so, you know, you got to trust other people, but bear in mind they're trusting you too. Yes? Going through uh, couch surfing and using the system of verifying them, have you had any, like, pretty questionable experiences? Uh, the worst ha thing I ever had on couch surfing was somebody told me I got a bed and I actually got a couch and they had no sheets. And so I had to, like, sleep in my jacket. Um, but I've, the system is pretty self -reg regulating because people are, you know, verifying and you know leaving honest reviews and they do go through a, a process that doesn't mean you're never going to get someone who's boring a little weird or maybe a, a little sketchy um, but that's why I try to stick to profiles okay. who have you know 
I've stayed here, I've stayed here, I've stayed here. If you're a girl and you see a guy's profile and the only people who are saying I stay there are girls, he's probably using couchsurfing for more than just you know, showing locals around, showing other people around. So keep that in mind. Great option for families, wouldn't it? But uh, Matt, do you know of anybody? Kazam is asking, does couch surfing network work for families? Yes, it does. Yeah, it does. Again, change your search settings to you know how many people. Like uh, it'll be say, I forget the exact wordage, but it's usually like you know how many people will will are with your party or uh, host like four people, and then it will just show back the people who are willing to host that many people. Okay for families. Check that button. House sitting is another thing to do. You know, if you want to stay in, um, and Don and Allison talked about this in their talk yesterday, how they were going up uh, to BC and they had signed up for a bunch of house sitting. Well, you know, if you go away, you don't want your house um, empty for you know four months while you're away. I'll come and watch it for you. Um, it's free. I get a kitchen. I get you know to use your car. I get to meet your neighbors, um, you know. So it's a great service. I mean, there are things you need to watch out for, but all these sites understand that you know people are naturally suspicious of others, so they work to build trust. And you know, you can vet people. I mean, if, for the house sitting, you can interview people. You know, it doesn't feel right. No, for same thing with the home exchange. And don't remember, people are swapping with you, so they're just as freaked out. And you can always send your neighbors to, you know, and your friends to monitor them. Apartment rentals. You had talked about Airbnb. Uh, I used to use couchsurfing a lot, uh, but I found as I've gotten older, I really don't like to use couchsurfing a lot because I like my own space, and I tend to have to, like to write a lot. Um, and I, again, I, don't, I find it rude if I was like, "Hey, thanks for the free couch." Now, don't mind me. I have to type like four articles and answer some emails. Uh, I really have grown into apartment rentals, and that's renting out uh, like an Airbnb, home, a site like HomeAway, VRBO, vacation rental by owner, people renting out extra space in their home. We talked about this as a way to earn some extra money. They're cheaper than hotels, um, more expensive than hostels, so they're sort of the in-between. They're private, they're calm, they furnish. You can get a kitchen so you can cook, thereby reducing your food costs, stay longer. Um, so I really like them. Um, they're, they're good. You know, one thing you definitely want to watch out about is where the location is. You know, Candace talked yesterday about you know, she was in a very you know, quiet part of town, and you know, maybe she realized she's going to start staying in places where there's lights and people around. You know, if you're in a really removed from the center, one, it could take a lot of money to get to where you want to see, but you know, you're in a quiet neighborhood that you don't really know, in a home you don't really know, and so um, I did this in London. I definitely got an apartment in a really kind of sketchy part of town, and um, you know, so you want to be conscious of where that home is located. Can you um, address before you move on negotiations? Um, you know, there's the price that's listed, and then there's um, with oh, home rentals? Yeah. Um, I've never negotiated the price. I just sort of pay, what, pay what is asked. Hmm. Uh, I've heard that's something that actually they rather encourage on B, uh, Airbnb. That they want you to, you know, say, would you take, you know, whatever, they, they want 200, would you take 150? And apparently people are very open to that. They like the negotiation process. That's cool. I know there are discounts offered, for, like long term, like if you stay a couple of nights. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess I'll learn. I learned something new. <laughs> um, I will start negotiating. You know, I've just you know figured you know if people want forty bucks for the night. I'll give them forty bucks for the night. Um, and travel anywhere is saying, Matt, if you've never couched this before, how do you set yourself up with a network? Um, so, but if there isn't like a meetup in your area, if this is really new to you and people are looking to see, because they're vetting you just as much as you're yeah, vetting them. Yeah. So, <laughs> have a full profile. You know, put lots of pictures of yourself up there. Fill everything out completely. Um, <clears throat> join groups, like you know, even just uh, if you're just interacting with people online, um, in the groups. Um, get friends to verify you. Have couchsurfing verify you. 
because just because you don't have a home doesn't mean they, can't, they won't vet you as sort of a traveler. Um, and, and those are some ways to do, to do it. Um, start your own couch surfing meetup, yes. I actually have a place that I list on Airbnb, and a lot of the people do try to negotiate on the price. Yeah. If the dates are really close, then I'll typically go a lower price because I just want to get those dates booked. So that's yeah. something to look out for if you're using it. Okay, it was great. Wow, I'm gonna negotiate more. <laughs> I'm a bad negotiator though, so I'd be like, oh, you said 50, well, how about 49? Sold, <laughs> damn it, should've done it, done it cheaper. Um, but yeah, so if with couch surfing, you know, make sure you, your profile is complete and they can see like you're sort of a real person and get verified by couch surfing themselves. Interact with some groups and have some friends sort of give you some thumbs up. Um, especially if they have used couch surfing before and they sort of have a verified profile. So I can be like, who's this John that says, you know, um, Bob is awesome, I'll click on your profile and I'll, I'll see like you're a real person with great um, social proof and I'll be like, all right, well, Bob must be great, so let's, let's bring him over. I went to Germany to do a TV show a few years ago and somehow they'd forgotten to book me a room. So I did Airbnb and it was great, mm -hmm. but he was, the Airbnb, because I'd never used it before, he kept saying, I'm really nervous, can we do a Skype call, I really need to see you, and I thought, I'm on TV, you know, <laughs> go and watch well, me. But I'm he was on really, TV. really cool. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it that way, but I said, but you can find out who I am, you can see, or whatever, but he said, no, I need to talk to you, and, and I appreciated that, because yeah. I'd never done it before. He needed to make sure he didn't have single white female coming to stay. <laughs> and I'll say the other way around, actually, my husband and I, when we first moved to San Francisco, we did Airbnb, and we, instead of booking it before we saw it, we went in and saw it, and negotiated, and then decided to book it from there. I think you have to remember you are going into somebody's home. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, so a couple other things to get through. Let's take a time. Farm stays, land a farm. You get, they're like, more like bed and breakfasts. Um, can be kind of pricey, but you, know, you get to be out in nature. Uh, there are a lot of farm stay websites. Farm stay Australia, farm stay US. Um, peaceful, calm, very family friendly, very good for a long term traveler who sort of wants to stay in a place for a while. You're willing, you might be allowed to work for your meals, room and board. Um, there's a, something called woofing um, that's similar. Uh, willing workers of the, uh, willing workers on organic farms. Um, it's free. You don't need any farm skills. You, um, just kind of show up. There's a little book you get. You pay a membership fee. They give you a book of farms that accept uh, workers. Meals included. You get to give back. Um, you have a lot of, it's a great place to meet other long-term travelers. Even if you just want two weeks, go somewhere and, and work. Woofing is great. Um, it's probably not going to be luxurious. You're going to have to wake up early and do farm work. Um, but you don't need any experience, and so um, this is sort of the flip side of the farm stay. I've done that, actually. Yeah. I stayed on a permaculture farm, and it was actually more luxurious than you would think. And there was a waterfall nearby, and we played, and I actually got to learn a lot about something that I don't know about. Yeah. So there was an experience of learning, and also um, they didn't work us too hard. Yeah. They were pretty nice. yeah. <laughs> This is a really popular thing, especially um, in Australia, New Zealand, lots of travelers do farm work, um, pick lots of fruit. Strawberries are pretty much picked by intrepid backpackers looking to stay longer. Um, Italy is really popular. France is really popular. Um, there's a gr there's a sort of, this is growing in Central and South America. Um, you, you had a question. Would you have any like websites you'd recommend to look for those sort of things? Wolfing.com. So um, here's another unique thing you can do. You can stay in monasteries. Most of the time you can stay with them uh, for free, um, but some of them do cost money. Um, keep in mind that you know, while they're family friendly and you often get meals included, monks, monks and nuns wake up pretty early and you're waking up with them and you probably will likely have a curfew. Um, but you know, there's the Camino de Santiago, which is a big pilgrimage trail through France and Spain, stay at monasteries, and it's you know free. 
Um, you know, it's, it's really a, a very different way to stay. But there are many, many monasteries that will let you stay. Uh, there's a few websites out there. Uh, but most of the time, you kind of have to call up or show up. Um, you know, and sort of find them. They're, they're great, especially if you're going to do like a pilgrimage path. Like you want to do like the Camino de Santiago, you want to walk that, or you want to do the one in Turkey that Candace talked about yesterday. Um, but yeah, definitely a unique way. And, you know, oftentimes costs very little. And actually, Lee was asking the question about convents in Europe. It's the same thing. Convents yeah. in Europe, monasteries in Asia. monastery. Yeah. Um, same. So I have the con you know, the convents, you know, you got to be a woman for. Mm -hmm. um, monasteries tend to be a little bit more male, but sometimes we'll take families and such. Before we move on from uh, exchanging stays for work or, or anything like that, do you have to con be concerned with visas uh, or any kind of application process? Uh, you should always look at the work visa pro policies of the country you're going for. So in Australia and New Zealand, which have a big pool of applicants, um, to pull from, they tend to look for travelers who are on working holiday visas, uh, which is a visa you can get if you're 30 or younger and allows you to work in that country. Um, in, in, I've known in Europe where people have just shown up and, you know, as long as you're not overstaying your tourist visa, that's sort of fine. Um, it depends really on the farm and the country. So. In Europe, you can kind of get away with it. In Norway, they tend to like you to have a, a more of a visa. The Scandinavians tend to be sticklers for the rules. Um, Australia and New Zealand, they do want you to have a visa just because it's such an important part of that local economy. Um, and there's so many people coming and doing it, they'd much rather make sure everything's on the up and up. So lastly, let's talk about hostels. Who loves hostels? I love hostels. Who thinks hostels are only for young people? Who thinks you're going to end up in Bratislava, the subject of a medical, medical experiment? This is worrying you, I can tell. <laughs> no, um, I went to Bratislava at Thanksgiving. I had a good time. We'll have to compare notes. Yes, well, you know. <laughs> so hostels have this perception that they're, you know, they're old, they're dirty, they're stinky, they're filled with stinky backpackers, and the facilities are, aren't so nice. And, you know, you're going to get weird toe fungus when you go into the shower. Um, that may have been true a long time ago, but now they tend to be pretty nice. Uh, they're very affordable. You get dorm rooms, you get private rooms. Uh, they're great places to meet people. We've talked all about, that, about that yesterday. They're centrally located. They have informed staff. Even if I'm not staying at a hostel, I will walk into a hostel and ask the staff, where's a good local market? Uh, what are some cheap things to do? They, do? they feel those questions all day, every day from travelers. They know the budget stuff to do. So here's a tip. Even if you're not staying in a hostel, go in and ask them about things to do and see and where to eat cheap because they're going to know. Most have kitchens, which is great because then you can cook your meals and save money on food. Some of the downsides is that, yes, when you're in a uh, a place full of young travelers, they tend to be loud and they might party a little bit too much. They may not always be family friendly and not all of them are super clean. But there are plenty that are family friendly, uh, there are plenty that are super clean, and there are ones that are not so loud. Uh, YHA hostels are, are great for groups and family travelers. Um, you can look on hostelworld.com, hostel bookers, Hostels.com, all these sites allow you to sort of see rankings for hostels as well as reviews so you can know if like, you know, maybe that one person was like, ah, uh, this wasn't spotless, I think it's dirty. But if everybody is like, the shower smells, then maybe they're not going to be too clean. So you know, keep this in mind, hostels are a great place to meet people. I love staying in hostels. I don't stay in dorms too often because I don't sleep well and I'm past that stage in my life where sleeping with eight people in a dorm room while five people are snoring is, is an enjoyable experience for me. But I, I love them. They, I've showed pictures to my parents of hostels that I've stayed at. 
that have common rooms and Wi-Fi and first-class kitchen and, and you know, organized tours. And I'm like, these aren't the hostels I remember. And I'm like, nope, totally different now. As people have grown up in sort of the technology age, they have higher expectations of comfort and they expect more from hostels. You can still find those bottom barrel hostels, but most of the time they're really nice. So uh, with that, um, I will leave you with that. There are many alternatives to the simply book your flight, book your hotel, and forget it mentality that you see so often. It's just you know, go to one site, you know, go to the hotels.com site, book, I'm done. If you that you know, search a little bit, think outside the box, you're gonna find ways to not be the sucker who paid the most money for that plane ticket, and you're gonna find great alternatives to hotels that allow you to stay, um, get more in touch with locals, save you money, and you know, have a kitchen, meet great people.